How do I, 34 slash M, convince my wife, 29 slash F, that she's overdoing it with cosmetic surgery without coming off as controlling? My wife Jennifer and I have been married for two plus years now, together for five. We're in a picture perfect, strong, loving relationship, and we communicate well. There's no children in the picture and it's likely we'll remain that way in the future. Currently our home is in a major metropolitan area in Southern California where we both have full-time jobs, and are both working from home. My wife has always been stunningly attractive, conventionally speaking. We are both very into fitness and a healthy lifestyle. She works really hard on her body, and it shows. She has also always been interested in cosmetic procedures. Once we were engaged, our financial situation became more comfortable and she would request the occasional procedure for certain special occasions. At first I was hesitant about it, and I made it very clear she already looked great. That said, she was very persistent, and after the first few smaller procedures it was clear they really boosted her confidence and genuinely made her feel happier and sexier. I have to admit that for each procedure, while I didn't encourage her one way or the other, I did end up liking the outcome and have told her as much. Since we've been together she's received breast implants, lipo, a nose job, as well as various lip fillers and other fillers around her face. I did a lot of research on surgeons in our city and made sure she was getting these procedures from the highest quality board certified surgeon money could buy. The work she's had done is understated, very natural looking, and the surgeon doing the work is extremely talented. He is employed full time and salaried, however our incomes are highly mismatched, I make 20-30x her annual salary, so I've never asked her to contribute to our day-to-day -day expenses like mortgage payments, bills, groceries, meals out, etc. Similarly, I've never expected her to pay for cosmetic procedures because I wanted her to have the best care possible. She has always been very gracious about this arrangement and instead she saves her income to surprise me with the occasional dinner out, extravagant birthday presents, fun day trips, and other unexpected but appreciated gestures. Now, she spends a fair amount of time on Instagram and if you spend much time on there you'll know there's a look a lot of girls have. This look involves very large breasts, tiny waists, a toned flat stomach, a large and defined butt, prominent lips, enhanced cheekbones, etc. I don't really judge anyone's aesthetic preference, but for me personally, some of the girls on Instagram take it a little far. That said, my wife is absolutely in love with that look, and has made it clear it's her goal. Here's where the issue arises. We've discussed it a lot, and I've gently, made it clear the cosmetic look she's going for isn't really to my preference and I won't pay for the procedures for her. I also made it clear that it's her body and I would in no way prevent her from doing what she wanted to. The result of this is she started saving all of her income for large, 800cc, breast implants, butt implants, jaw contouring, and a procedure that moves the very few fat cells she has on her thighs slash waist into her butt. I guess I'm asking what should I do here? I don't want her to go through with it, but in the end, it's her body and she can do what she wishes to it. Do I have a say at all? I don't want to act in a controlling manner, but there are always risks involved with elective procedures, especially when doing multiple at a time. I also work in a field that involves a lot of professional networking and social events. Think black tie, she's always my date, and there's only so much you can do to hide such ample assets in an evening gown. There's a bit of a connotation that comes along with that look and while she's comfortable with it, I'm not so sure I am. How do I go about changing her mind, or should I even attempt to do that? Is there a line of reasoning that would be more effective than it's not really my thing? Too long didn't read, wife is already hot but wants to spend her own money to get that Instagram look via a number of very significant cosmetic procedures. It's not to my preference but I also don't want to be controlling. How do I talk her out of it, or at least convince her to cut back? 
This is a serious addiction and she needs professional counseling. I have done half of the procedures that she has and I can confirm that it's difficult to stop. Luckily I ended up at two different clinics where both doctors refused to perform any kind of cosmetic procedures and delicately advised to work on mental health. This was a wake up call, coming from a professional. Unfortunately many doctors do not care about that and beauty standards differ in countries. Perhaps you need to convince more strongly that she already is perfect the way she is or drag her to a therapist. Go right now and look up body dysmorphia. She may need professional help. In the end, it's her body and she can do what she wishes to it. This is true, of course. But when our loved ones seek to damage their body and, or put their health at risk, it does become our duty to intervene and try and help them away from the risk and potential damage. It sounds like your wife may be crossing the border from taking care of her health and well-being to causing damage to herself with multiple operations that are unlikely to be beneficial to her, and can instead cause permanent, life-lasting damage. So, based on the info on your post, it may be time for you to raise the alarm. The conversation isn't about you look good the way you are, but about I'm worried about you. It sounds to me like what you're aspiring for isn't healthy. Can you take the conversation from there as you would with any health issue, first trying yourself, then getting for example, a doctor, a therapist involved etc. I think this is really good advice, worded very well, thanks. I'm not against getting a professional therapist involved, but that would be a line that once crossed might be hard to come back from. I do agree when it comes to her health, if I can't convince her on my own it would be the correct next step. Hello, I am guessing you guys are somewhere in LA County. I'm also in SoCal so I can understand the sort of culture around these things. It is definitely hard when it seems like everyone around you, both online and in real life, look this particular way. I've had friends who were not into any surgery, and then after moving into the city started to become insecure and get some procedures done. Definitely try to have her speak to a therapist about this. Maybe you can do some more research on good surgeons, and then speak with them about your concerns for her mental health and have them bring it up with her. Hearing this sort of thing from a professional as well as from you could be more effective. Can be so damaging to feel like you're the ugly one or different in your group friends. Another option is you could try coming up with a compromise. Ask her to speak with a therapist to try to get the bottom of why she feels she needs these procedures, and if after a couple months of sessions she still wants it, then she can go for it. I think you need to be honest with yourself about your own feelings and how much this is going to affect you. Is this something that could be a deal breaker for your relationship? If it is, that is something to make clear to her. This isn't a matter of being controlling, it is a matter of honesty. You came into the relationship expecting one thing and now she is dramatically changing that. Not to mention the possible addiction, dysmorphia, psychological effects that are going on with her need for this particular look. As it pertains to her, I would highly suggest that she talks to a psychiatrist for her own good, apart from anything to do with you. There are some tough questions she needs to face for herself. Is this healthy for her? Will she ever be content with the look she is going for? When is enough going to be enough for her? How much damage is she potentially doing to her body in chasing her dream? How much damage is she potentially doing to her psyche in this pursuit? At the end of all of this, the answers to these questions may be that she can be perfectly happy and content with these changes and you may still not be okay with that. And that is fine. You can accept that she wants these changes and be supportive of it and she may need to accept that this is still still a deal breaker for you. The important thing is to have a long healthy conversation with her about how it is honestly affecting you. And if this is a big issue for both of you, seek some couples counseling and decide where to go from there. I don't think my 28F husband, 34M, likes me anymore, he just doesn't know it. My husband and I have been married for 3.5 years. We have two wonderful daughters, a 2.5 year old and a 12 month old. In the past, my husband has a great husband and a wonderful father, but has become very detached lately. He spends a bunch of time playing games on his phone while home and doesn't spend any quality time with us. I recently brought this up with him and he told me I will try to do better, which is what he always says to any issue I bring up. He never wants to talk things out and never makes an effort past those words. I have to actively work to talk and resolve issues for both of us as he doesn't. He just expects I'll break down and 
and do it. As a result, I make changes and he doesn't. For one day, he stopped being on his phone. But then again tonight, I was playing with 2.5 years old and he was with 12 month old. When I approached them, he was in the corner on his phone and 12 month old was playing herself and couldn't get him to engage. After we took the girls to bed, he sat on the couch and zoned into the TV. I tried to just talk to him and he wouldn't respond because well I didn't hear a question. He picked up his phone and started playing again. He has gone through cycles of this in the past but it's just getting worse and lasting longer. I truly fear he just doesn't want to be around us. I have considered that he is burnt out at work and being dad all the time. I took care of the girls without help for five days so he could get things done and still nothing. I try to set things up to do, hiking, activities, and he doesn't engage or care to bring up his own ideas. His family is going on their boat for the weekend and I told him to go while I kept the girls and worked on winterizing put house. Just to take a break. I've had a hell of a job that's put strain on our relationship so I'm leaving it in part to reduce that stress for us, among other reasons. He insists he doesn't know what I'm talking about or why I think he's unhappy. He won't make any effort. He hardly looks away from his phone to see me or the girls playing. It's clear to me but I don't think he knows. I recently had a miscarriage and he was unfazed, not a hiding his feeling issue genuinely not caring. He is also quitting the nicotine pouches he was using so I considered this as a reason, the games are taking the place of the nicotine. It doesn't explain why he just doesn't care anymore. I don't know. I'm at a loss. I want our marriage to work but I feel like I am the only one trying. I'm trying to give him space while also creating bonding moments but no buy-in from him. I feel like he's giving up on us and is so detached already he just doesn't realize it. I don't want to force him to talk more or make him feel like he's doing everything wrong. I just want him to be present with us. What else can I do to make him like me again? Too long didn't read, my husband is not engaging with me but doesn't seem to realize it, what can I do to help us? I am your husband sitting on my phone and ignoring my life happening around me. It is depression. It's an indicator for me that I need professional help, medication and therapy. My depression has ruined multiple relationships. You are allowed to say, your actions make me feel like I'm not worth your time, and this isn't healthy for me. We either need counseling or to separate because I don't feel loved. I'm sorry you're going through this. Ask him to get checked out for depression and into therapy stat. Then if he can't pick up the slack and actually be present I'd leave. This is awful, showing your kids that his phone is more important than you all are. Either he can help himself and improve or you'll have to make a choice to live a better life for your children. PSI hate phones. They are always there and people are honestly addicted. Could he have a game or gambling addiction? Some other people have said it but I want to emphasize it. It sounds like your husband is suffering from the double whammy of depression and denial. I was married to someone who had very similar issues. Some people when they are depressed will completely shut down to avoid dealing with it. If this is true for your husband, he doesn't just need therapy. He needs medical attention, and the sooner the better. I finally got it through my head that my ex needed medical attention, I took her to an urgent care. She was so dissociative that I had to speak for her to the doctor to describe her mood and symptom. The doc immediately prescribed an anti-anxiety medication and referred her to a psychiatrist who diagnosed her. From there she went on to therapy. To this day I feel if I had understood her struggle sooner we might still be together. I realize I may be projecting, but from what you've described I don't think I am. Good luck with everything. This is what I'm worried about. He was raised in a family that doesn't believe in mental illnesses. He regularly says he just doesn't let himself feel negative feelings. I have dealt with severe PPD A, as well as depression and social anxiety my whole life. I see it in him but I cannot bring it up. He will tell me I'm attacking him and say fine sorry I've made you miserable for so long. He just shuts down and turns it all on me. Suddenly it's everything I do wrong and I can't get him past that. I'm sorry for the loss of your baby. It sucks your husband didn't care. I'm sure you needed support and he was on his phone. It's not too much to ask for face-to-face -face time between your husband and your kids. I would recommend couples therapy and individual therapy. You had a miscarriage with no support, and your husband may be depressed or just a jackass. 
It sounds to me like he could be depressed. I would recommend him doing a weekly behavioral therapy session. Also find scheduling family time, alone time, and couple time can be helpful to build stronger bonds and relationships. Family time could be dinner and a movie with the family once a week where everyone is included. You and your husband could each have a night where the other tends to the children for a few hours so each of you can pamper yourselves however you choose. Monthly I like to schedule a date night if possible. It helps with your relationship and is also something fun to look forward to with your significant other. I, 20 meters, hate my life because of my girlfriend 19F who loves me more than anything. So I've known Emily, fake name obviously, since I was 15. We worked the same job together, I started a couple months before her. I've had a crush on her since the first day I met her, before I even knew her name. Over the course of a couple years we became good friends, best friends even. I've asked her out probably 10 to 15 times. I got turned down quite a few but I was never ready to give up. Then, right around my 18th birthday she confessed her love to me and we've been dating since around a month after that. It's been good. It's been rough. She's been kicked out of her home a few times. She actually came to live with me at my parents' house for eight months during 2019. At the end my mom kicked her out because she didn't work during any of that time and didn't do anything besides complain about my family situation. Okay, whatever. She moved back in with her mom at the beginning of this year. Shortly after that her mom met a guy and they began dating. Then just got engaged a month ago. She's, the mom, currently talking about moving into her now fiancé's house by the end of October. Emily and I, along with our mutual friend Ian have been talking about moving into Emily's mom's place once she moves out, and we take over the payments for 12 months before deciding if we want to extend it or find somewhere else. Here's the kicker. Emily, Ian, and I all went camping together last weekend. It started off great, but the last day Emily had a meltdown of sorts and drove off alone in the only car we took, four hours away from home. She came back 20 minutes later with an energy drink, saying she just went up to the store down the road. Emily and I argued, so I walked away and honestly didn't notice until she got back. Unfortunately this really freaked out Ian, so badly that a few days after he got back he announced that he no longer wants to move in with us. And I can't say I blame him too much. Problem is now Emily and I cannot afford her mom's place without a third person. Neither of us have anyone else who wants to move in. I never wanted to move out in the first place. I'm 20 already, but I have no problem continuing to live at home and save money until I'm ready to move out. Emily however doesn't have this option. Her family isn't exactly protective of her, and would tell her to just work out her issues by herself. I absolutely know she could not afford a place by herself. But I barely wanted to move out when Ian was on board, now I'd be paying more and not even have another friend living with us. Honestly, I really do not want to move. I've been thinking of breaking up with Emily, but again, I know she would be homeless if I don't help her by moving in with her. And to make matters worse, Emily is extremely in love with me. Head over heels in love. Obsessed actually may be more accurate. She doesn't have any friends besides me and my two closest friends. But she's currently pissed at both of them over Ian backing out a month and a half before we were set to move. Though she's alone. Only person she talks to outside of work is me. Anytime I'm not at work she's begging me to hang out. And I met with temper and rooms when I don't. Not unlike a toddler. It's worth noting that she was physically and mentally slash emotionally abused by her mom growing up. She's been in therapy for a couple years, and she's basically come to the realization that after having to suppress her emotions for so long, they never had a chance to develop so she's learning how to feel now. She's depressed and on medication for it, which she doesn't like taking but has been much better lately about taking them every day. She says I'm the only on she receives affection from. Think it would truly break her if I left. But I hate my life now. I wake up and I dread her call asking me to hang out. She doesn't enjoy any of my hobbies, and I don't share many interests with her. I just want alone time to work out or clean my room and my car. Or to hang out with other people without her getting jealous and throwing a tantrum. Now she's asking me every day to look at apartments with her. And to be honest every time I do I'm more and more sure that's just not what I want. How do I tell her I don't want to live with her, or honestly even still date her, without breaking her emotionally or leaving her to live on the streets? I may not be in love anymore 
but I do still love and care for her deeply. And the last thing I want is to hurt her. It might be smart to offer to help her list the available rooms in the house so she can find suitable roommates to replace you and your friend. Because you absolutely should not move in with her out of pity or guilt. That's a recipe for disaster and you know it. Tell her, kindly but firmly, that you've thought it over and for multiple you're just not ready to move out of your current home, and you don't feel like this relationship has a future. This is non-negotiable. You can help her find roommates in the meantime if she's still willing to accept your help. If she refuses, then you can sleep peacefully knowing that you did everything you could reasonably do to help her out of this bind. Feel for this girl, I really do. She's been dealt a tough hand for sure. But you are not the only thing standing between her and a lonely, destitute life. She can and will figure out her living situation, and she will love again. You're both very, very young with a hell of a lot ahead of you. Please do not put yourself in the position of caretaker when neither of you really have it all figured out yet. It's important to learn that in situations like these, you are not responsible for another person's safety and happiness. If you do not want to be with her, moving in with her mad having her be dependent on you is not going to make anything better. And you're so young. You have no obligation to take care of this person and will meet so many more people over the course of your life. The last thing you need to do is jump into something your instincts are telling you not to, that is also going to end up costing you money. End things, keep doing what you're doing, you may even meet someone new sooner than you think. This is one of those situations where it's just super unfortunate that hurt will inevitably be part of it. You can do this in a way that's kind, gentle, and honest and you should, but you can't do it in a way that doesn't hurt. Not wanting to be in a relationship anymore is valid, for any reason, and the fact that you dread being with your partner says it's probably important you get some space from it sooner than later. You don't want to have spent most of your 20s in this relationship you're not enjoying and have to end it then, when it's even more difficult and painful, and you've sunk more cost into it. If I were you I would take it in steps. Begin first by putting your foot down about moving out. Establish that boundary. Don't budge on it. Use it to practice setting boundaries, even. Use the conversation to carve out what things you're willing and not willing to do, and the rest may very well follow from there. The first thing is just to make clear that you aren't going to move with her. I've given it some thought, and I'm not going to be able to move in with you. She needs to have whatever emotions she might have and pivot to a plan that will work for her. You realize that you're not actually doing Emily a favor by making your own life miserable, building up resentment and suddenly moving out of the flat, leaving her without a stable home right? Which is not your fault unless of course you string her along. You should tell her to find two other roomies, and take it from there. Do not move in with her if you're already thinking of breaking up! Exclamation mark.